Here's a really cool feature if you're using Excel at work. Did you know that you can have all of your work-related data, so information on employees, on products, or on customers, inside a single Excel cell? And this way, you have all the latest information across all of your Excel files, and it's not just you, but your colleagues have the latest information too. You can use these to create templates that you can send out to others. Basically, you're going to have one source of truth. How cool is that? Let's set one up together. First of all, let's clarify one thing. Not everyone is going to be able to create data types that are available to the entire organization. And that's a good thing. Only a few people are going to have the access to do that. And you might not be one of them. So after you watch this and you think this is useful, forward this video to the person who can implement this for you. Now, just to give you a quick overview of what rights are needed for this, take a look at this. Now, feel free to pause this video and go over this in more detail, but we're going to do some role playing and this way you can picture what's possible based on these different points of views. Okay, so assume it's my first day at work as an HR intern and I received this list from my boss. What he wants is for me to create a report where he can search for or select an employee's name, see their image, the department they work in, and how many years they've been in the company. Now, the only information I have is this, but there's something strange about these names. They have a little suitcase beside them. And when I click on this suitcase, I get this whole card pop up. I have additional information about this employee here. I can see their age, the number of years they've been with the company, their salary, and so on. And when I click on any of these, so on this icon right here, I get that content inserted on the cell beside it. And if I click on this icon on top, I get all the fields in list view. So if we go with gender, that populates to the side. Now, when I click on this cell, I notice that it's referencing the original cell and then it has dot gender for this one. And for the other one here, it has dot first name. So all of these formulas are dynamic. What the suitcase is, are organizational data types. Because he's already added these organizational data types, I don't need to have access to the original data set. Everything is cached. All I need to have is Excel for Office 365, which I have for my job. So now I can go ahead and quickly create what I was requested to do. So I'm gonna add a data validation list. For source, we are gonna select all of these names. Now this is not an official Excel table, so I'm just going to add some additional blank rows for future employees. Now check this out. Because I have Office 365 and I have this new feature, searchable drop-down list or autocomplete drop-down list, I can start typing the name of the employee and we see it populated here. So let's just press tab and select that. Now right here we wanted to get the image, so I'm going to use what we saw before, start off with the equal sign, select my data type, and then type in a dot and select what we need from here. So we wanted the image of the person. Let's select that, press enter, and we get the image automatically populated in here. We want it department, and we wanted the number of years the person is with the company that was under tenure. Let's select that and press enter. That's just the number of years. So let's make this more readable. Type in and space years. And that's it. We're done with the request. Now, if I change my selection to Ben, or if I start typing E. Kelly, that's what I want. We have the start of a very promising dashboard. Now, as the senior HR specialist who's responsible for designing these templates, I need to have a Power BI Pro license to be able to apply these data types. So I have the names of the employees. I'm just going to select them, go to data, and then select that data type. You'll find your recently used up here. These are the ones from the organization. If you don't see what you need, you can click on more from your organization. In this case, these are employees. I'm going to click on them and that's going to transform these into the employee data type. Now, if it can't find something, or let's say you just type only a part of the name. So I know 
that her first name is Jessica, but I'm not sure what her last name is. It's going to add a question mark here and it's going to give you some available options. And then you can click on select and it picks up the correct name. Now you can have different data types here. So let's say you have a list of your products. I'm just going to try with book and see what we get. There is a product data type in the organization. So let's select that. There are no actual books. There are ebook accessories. So let's go and click on that. And now we have a product data type with different types of options, like which department the product belongs to, which category it's in, the cost, and so on. Of course, don't forget to refresh this so that you can grab the latest data from Power BI in Excel. Once I've set this up and converted my text to data types, I can forward this to someone who doesn't have a Power BI Pro license and they can continue to use this. Now, what if I want a data type that doesn't exist here? So I want someone from our Power BI department to add a new data type. I get it approved by the, my managers and now it's their turn to add this in for me. Now, as the Power BI responsible in your company, you get the request by the HR department to add a new data type for consultants. The request is approved, so you open up Power BI for desktop and you start by grabbing the data. The data could be anywhere. It could be on SQL, on the web, or data. You have so many different options. In this case, it happens to be in an Excel workbook. If you have your data in Excel, it does make sense to have these on a SharePoint drive and not have it somewhere on your own C drive. So in this case, I just have it somewhere on my drive, so I'm going to just open it up. The file only has a single sheet. That's the data. Let's go ahead and transform this. We get the ability to add any columns that we need and also make sure that the data types are correct. So in this case, we don't really need to do anything special with this, but it would help to add a new column for age. So I have date of birth here. Let's quickly add that inside Power Query. So we're just going to go and add a column, date, age. We get the age in days, hours, minutes, and seconds. So let's go to duration and change this to total years. We don't need all that detail. So let's go to transform, rounding, and round down. Okay, so we don't need the previous age here. Let's delete that and change the header to age. Let's update the query name and call this consultant. Now let's go and load this so under home, close and apply. The data is now loaded into the data model. We're going to go to the data tab and adjust the formatting of any of the columns that we need. So remember, data types and formatting are different things. To get the correct format show up in Excel, we need to update the formatting here. So for example, for salary, I want to see that as a currency. So let's just quickly update that here. And for bonus level, let's get that as a percentage. Now for images. So I don't want these to be text. I want these to actually show up as images. So I'm going to update the data category instead of uncategorized. We want to switch this to image URL. This is going to show us the image and not this path that we see here. Now it's important to note that these are all valid links. So all of these images are loaded on a website and can be accessed by anyone. Now, at this point, you can go ahead and add more measures. You can add more tables and relate these together, but we're keeping this simple. We just want to load the information we have here as a data type in Excel. So let's select this under properties, scroll all the way down and you're going to see is featured table. We're going to turn this on. Enter a description for role level. I'm going to select name. Now, this is the text that you're going to type in to convert to a data type in Excel. So be mindful of what you select here. For the key column, I'm going to go with ID. Now click on save. And now we're ready to publish this to the Power BI server. So click on publish. If you haven't saved your Power BI desktop file, now is the time to save it. Let's click on save. Select the workspace that you want to publish this to. I'm going to publish it to company reports and click on select. And I would just have to wait a little bit for this to get published to Power BI. Okay, so it's finished. Let's open it up directly in Power BI. 
go to workspaces, company reports, and we can see it right here. To grant people access to this data set, select a data set, go to more options, manage permissions. Here you can add different users from your organization who you're going to allow to access this data set. Once you're done, you can make this data type easy to discover by going to more options again, but this time to settings. If you scroll down under endorsement and discovery, you can promote this data type. This way, the data set is going to be made discoverable and that others in your organization are going to be able to find it by name, tables, columns, and so on. We're going to click on apply. And then we just need to wait a bit for this to sync and show up on the Excel side. One thing to mention is that if you're connecting to files that are not on the cloud, like I did in this case, so if your data is on premises, for example, you need to activate the gateway connection to be able to refresh the file. If you connect it to SharePoint, you're going to see data source credentials active so that you can click on it and manage your credentials directly from here. Okay, so now I've opened up Excel. Let's go to the data tab and see if we can find it here. We have consultant right here. So let's test it out. I'll type in the name Alyssa because I think that's the name of one of the consultants. Let's go and convert this to the consultant data type. There's only one Alyssa, Alyssa Michelle. That's her picture. And we get more information about her. Now the HR specialist can go ahead and create any necessary templates that they want to distribute to others in the department. So what do you think? Can you see this being useful at your organization? What data types would you create and how would you use them? Share that with us in the comments. I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope you found it useful. Give it a like, subscribe if you aren't subscribed yet, and I'm going to see you in the next video.